Starting off the new year with another LED torch review. This is the Rofus KR10. It's a brand new model out, so I thought I'd pick this up and have a look at it in a bit more detail and show you guys exactly what I think of this particular model. Now, I've laid everything out on the table there. You can see here, moving in onto the front of the case, some of the specs, we've got a range of 257 meters and 1100 lumens. Pay attention to the candela rating on this, which is 16,528. So we're expecting a, a bit more beam out of this, a concentrated beam. On the back, we have a more detailed spec on the torch we're using the Cree XBL High V3, quite a popular LED for this torch. Here is the instruction manual, fairly well laid out. And I'll zoom in now so you can see the operation. You can use the CR123 batteries, and here we have the output and run times based on the 18650 included cell. Other settings are available in this section of the manual. And we're going to take a look firstly at the accessories. This is the included hand strap. You can see the center adjuster there, similar to the other ones that I've looked at. And it's decent quality with a bit of stretch. We have a port cover for the micro USB and two spare O-rings. We also have a tail cap cover included too, a spare. The micro USB cable is uh, braided with metal tips. And moving on to the included holster, similar to the other Rofus ones I've looked at, Velcro closing on the front elasticated sides and on the back we have the metal popper underneath that is the belt loop as well and the d-ring on the top a bit of padding front and back so it offers a bit of protection for the torch which should just slot in here to have a look at that moving in onto the torch we can see we have a satin finish on the type 3 anodized aluminium so it's a heat treated aluminium it makes it a tougher shell and it resists scratching flipping open the port cover there the micro usb port and we have a fine mesh section for the hand grip good grip on this torch and it's quite slim actually slimmer than some of the other torches of this type that i've used there's a few anti-roll areas too on the top and bottom so it won't continue to roll down looking at the tail cap there you can stand this up there are flat sections on that now operation you can quickly press to get quick access to the on or continue to press it on as you'd expect on and off so you have a, a quick press now if you if you double press the tail switch you're going to the strobe mode it works pretty well. The only thing I might have changed is the put a turbo instead of the strobe. Now once it's on, you just cycle through the power settings by pushing the side button. The side button's nicely recessed. It has a stainless steel ring around the outside. And then if you longer press again, you can go into the strobe mode. So operation on this works pretty well. It's about as good as I'd expect for a two button solution on the torch. Now if you want to go into moonlight, push and hold the side button and then push the back button on. I like the fact that they've separated that. That brings you to the moonlight mode, so there's no chance of acting that, activating that by accident. Quick look at the LED. We have a smooth reflector and relatively deep one at that. We'll come to the outside test shortly. Taking the battery out of the back, this is a protected 18650. The capacity came in just under 3,400 milliamps an hour, which is fairly normal for this type of battery. They are usually a relabeled Panasonic cell, so this is exactly as I'd expect. A good quality cell, one of the best on the market at the moment. Now, if you wish to turn around the center part of the body, you can unscrew the top. We've gold plated springs on both sections to prevent the battery moving around. Simply reverse the center column and then screw it on and in the back section now so what we've done with this is change the clip position so instead of being at the bottom part it's now in the middle area so you can also pull off the clip and reverse it as well and I find this is a better position for the clip and some models that I've looked at similar to this you can't actually do that with them so I like that feature now I'm comparing it to the Lumintop EDC25 purely because they're pretty much the same price, very close on spec, and the design is very similar too. There's some slight differences between the two of them, 
there is a bit of a size difference, the aluminum top being a touch longer and it's also a bit thicker in diameter. They've also gone with a rubber covered switch on the side barrel. Quick look at the top, the LEDs are a bit different on this. We have a V3 on the Rofus on the right and on the aluminum top there's a V5 and the reflector design is slightly different but they're both similar in terms of appearance. Quick side shot here, you should be able to see that Rofus is a bit slimmer and it also has a flat top. The aluminum top has a nice feature which has an uneven surface so you can see if you put the torch down on it, light is still on. And here we have a look at the uh, tail cap section, you can see the extra girth on the aluminum top. Now when the battery power starts to go below 50%, the red LED comes on and then goes off again. When you are in very low power, it starts to flash, so it's time to charge it at that stage. To charge this, you have to turn on at the tail cap. Now this ramped the power settings down at the initial charge stages for about five or six minutes before it went up to the full charge rate, so it seems to do a softer charge. And I was getting up to about 0.83, 84 um, of an amp charging speed. This is the moonlight mode. I'm starting with the Rofus and switching to the Lumen Top. I would say the Rofus is just slightly brighter than the Lumen Top, um, but I'd have to say that the spec does seem to be less than the five lumens that's quoted. We're back on the Rofus there. Now here I'm comparing the KR10 to the TR20, the KR10 first. And now the TR20, which is rated to five lumens in moonlight mode, so there's quite a difference there. I would definitely say the KR10 is about maybe a couple of lumens, if not a touch less. Here we can see the beam output between the two, KR10 on the left and the 25 on the right. You'll see a bit more intensity right in the middle on the Rofus model. As you'd expect, water resistant is IPX8. Now for this test, just going through the um, SOS and strobe modes, we start with the beacon, which flashes every couple of seconds. And then moving on to the standard SOS, the three flashes, the long and short. Then you finish off with the standard strobe mode, which just flashes quickly at different intervals. Now for this test, we're about 100 foot, we're on the uh, KR10 and I'm going through the power settings should be right up to the top setting which will bring us to the turbo mode you can see quite a nice beam pattern on this I've got a bit of range to it as well and I'm switching to the lumen top EDC 25 and you'll see the slightly warmer appearance to the image with this torch it has a more uh, even spread out beam the um, Rofus tends to have a bit more concentration in the middle section this is a test that's done at around 35, 40 feet. And we're using the KR10 going through the power settings here. Now in terms of the beam definition on these torches, it's really down to your own taste. This is a mix between range and spread. So it doesn't have a huge flood effect, but it's not overly concentrated either. And we move right up to the top turbo setting now. You can see the power output on that. It's quite a nice power output on this with a bit of concentration in the middle so you get that extra range. Back on the EDC25, cycling through the power settings. Now the beam pattern on these two it is quite similar. There's just a bit more concentration in the central area on the Rofus. It's not a huge difference between the two of them. These are quite well balanced, these two. So if you're looking for a huge throw, there are other models. And again, likewise, if you're looking for a big flood effect, this is a wider angle shot. I'm on the KR10 first of all. Then switching over to the Lumen Top. For this next test, I'm using a longer range. So you can see the beam pattern on KR10 and then switching over to the EDC25. Just a slight difference between these two. A bit more intensity in the middle, back on the KR10 here. And you can see the same at close range, KR10 first and then onto the EDC25. It's blowing the highlights a bit more on the Rofus torch because there's more intensity and power in the central region. For this next test, I'm going to zoom in a bit on the lens just to give you an idea, a closer up shot on the KR10 first and then switching to the EDC25. You should clearly be able to see there's a bit of extra power in the central area. We're back on the KR10. You can see that extra power and concentration in the middle part and then moving back over to the lumen top. I've also done the same test slightly further distance, about 40, 45 feet, KR10 first, and then lumen top. You'll easily be able to tell the difference. One is the cooler 
image of the Rofus and then the lemon top has the warmer appearance. There isn't a huge difference in power with these, there's just a bit of extra concentration on the beam on the Rofus torch. So wrapping up with a quick summary and conclusion with this one, Rofus have actually done a really nice job. There's very few areas to pick holes in. Personally, I might have gone with a slightly different arrangement on the tail cap. I might have gone with the turbo, instant turbo instead of the strobe mode. Um, the charging speeds were good, not quite as high as some other models, but in every other area, I found the torch did really well. You have a choice of six power levels, you have three strobe modes, you have a good body design which can be reversed. You also have a lower than stated moonlight mode which was unexpected and there's the anti-lost mode too. Really it's fully featured for a torch and it's very competitive with other models that I've looked at. So to date this is probably one of the best models of torches that I've looked at in this particular segment and certainly worthy of some serious consideration.